Greetings to all of you in Budapest. I wish I could have been there with you in person. I'm not this year, but I will be in the future. For now, I'm grateful for the opportunity to address you this way. And I'd like to leave you with one main message. It's this. We can't just be against what the left sells us. We have to offer an alternative vision of our own. Yes, there is a transnational challenge that we face today in the form of the Great Reset, the agenda of the World Economic Forum from Davos, the idea of dissolving boundaries between nations, between the public sector and the private sector to together do what neither one could do on its own, a new oppressive form of race, gender, sexuality, and climate that pervade our culture, our movies, our universities, our educational institutions, our governments. But we can't just be against what the other side puts up. We have to stand for our alternative vision. That is sovereignty. Sovereign at the level of the individual, family, nation, and God. Individual, family, nation, God beats race, gender, sexuality, and climate if we have the courage to stand for something. And the trap that I see conservatives across the West falling for, especially in my home country, the United States of America, is that we satisfy ourselves with just hitting the left for its endless hypocrisies of wokeism, transgenderism, climatism, covidism, globalism, the list goes on. But we fail to understand these are really just symptoms of a deeper void of purpose and meaning. And take it from me, I'm a relatively young person. I know you have a lot of young leaders in Hungary. Your excellent prime minister, Viktor Orban, he actually was a young person the first time he was elected. And he has the good sense to appoint leaders from the next generation to help lead Hungary, which I appreciate about him. And I appreciated when I met him when he visited the United States. But take it from me as a relatively young person at the age of 38. What's going on in my generation is that people are starved for purpose. They are lost. They're hungry for purpose and meaning at a moment in our history when the things that used to fill that void, faith in God, patriotism, hard work, family. These things have disappeared. And when you have a vacuum that runs that deep, that is when the poison fills the void. And so it's up to us conservatives. We can't just be running from something anymore. We got to be running to something, to our vision of what it means to be sovereign. Sovereignty is the opposite of the Great Reset. And we stand for sovereignty. That's what this transnational new conservative movement is all about. They call it populist. Well, that understates what our actual movement is really centered on. It's centered on the sovereignty of the individual, that I'm not some member of a group identity, a race or a gender or a sexual orientation class, riding the tectonic plates of group identity, no. I am an individual, an agent, free to achieve anything I ever want with my own God-given talents and so are you. Sovereign at the level of the family, the nuclear family, being the greatest form of governance known to mankind, we shouldn't apologize for it. To say that I'm a citizen of this nation, in my case, the United States of America, in many of your cases, a citizen of Hungary, that you're proud of it, that I'm proud of it, not some nebulous global citizen fighting climate change, forget that, no. That I'm a citizen of my nation, I'm patriotic about it, and I won't apologize for that either. And yes, that here in the United States, I will tell you we are one nation under God. And one of the beauties of the way your leadership is leading your country in Hungary as well is that God is no longer a bad word. Individual, family, nation, God. That's what we stand for as conservatives. We're not just against the other side. We have an alternative vision of our own. And if we serve that up to the people, most people in the modern West, I don't care if they're black or white or man or woman, it doesn't matter. Most of us, 80 plus percent of us, share those same basic values in common. It's just that there's this culture of fear that has stopped us from talking about it. Fear that has spread across the modern West like an epidemic. Well, you know what? Fear has been infectious, but courage can be contagious too. It just requires more of us to actually step up and show it. And so that's what I'm calling on you to do. Stand up for what's right. Stand up for truth. Stand up for the idea that God is real that there are two genders, man and woman, that fossil fuels are a requirement for human prosperity, that reverse racism is racism, that an open border is not a border. Kudos to you in Hungary. We have a lot to learn from you in the United States when it comes to sealing a border. 
Parents should determine the education of their children. The nuclear family isn't a bad word. It is the greatest form of governance known to mankind. We don't apologize for these things. We embrace them. And that's how we're going to revive the West. That's how, in our side of the pond, we're going to revive the United States of America. And kudos and congratulations to you and your country's leadership for providing an example where many countries in the West have gone soft. You are standing for many of those values, especially faith and especially family and especially national identity that have been the backbone of every flourishing civilization known to mankind. And so it may be so in the West again. Thanks again for allowing me to share a few thoughts with you. We'll see you in person next time. And in the meantime, stay strong, speak your mind, and don't apologize for who you are.